Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. When talking about a new graphics card or a new processor, it's always very exciting when you start to hear talking points like a ground-up redesign or a completely new architecture, because that means that there is a lot of potential for drastic improvements in performance. If we look back at Zen 3 to Zen 4, there were modest IPC gains, of course, but ultimately much of the performance increase was down to one simple factor higher clock frequency that's not necessarily bad but when we're talking about a ground i redesign well that becomes a lot more exciting at least in my personal opinion and this does bring us to the fact that amd have officially confirmed a ground up redesign for zen 5 but of course they have not provided what type of numbers at least in public we can expect for this next generation of processors now, when it comes to my own information in terms of IPC, I've heard roughly 15 to 20% from some sources, and they are pretty adamant about those numbers. And that would be an average workload with, you know, games and whatever else. Of course, that would vary. So, for example, heavily uh, multi-thread workloads would perhaps on average differ a little less from a single-thread workload and so on. But on average, 15 to 20%. On the other hand, more recently, a couple of very good sources are telling me that those numbers, they are underselling the processes significantly, and instead it's going to be maybe 30 to 35%, and this is based upon the latest engineering sample um, that are floating around, and I would also add that it seems that the Ryzen CPUs, which of course would be Granite Ridge, Essentially, they are entering the final production stages at this point. We are waiting for the final Agisas. So there's probably, especially for um, the Cerberus as well, we're probably going to be, well, let's just say really close to um, getting some very, very, very solid leaks. So on top of that, despite the fact that early reports were telling us that there would possibly be some regression in clock frequency, um, I was basically told that there was a respin that was done um, for, again, Zen 5, and the newer processors are expected to be roughly on par, maybe slightly higher in clock frequency. How high? Well, basically 6-ish gigahertz. Realistically, it's going to be a little less than that, depending, of course, on, again, the number of threads that are loaded up. Just typical stuff, really, for a processor. But on average, we can expect a, perhaps a very, very modest uh, clock frequency improvement. But ultimately, again, roughly speaking, the same numbers as previously. So this brings us to a very interesting leak on Twitter. Now, I can't personally verify. So Simon, who's fairly well known in the leaker circles, um, and also, as a disclaimer, I sometimes DM him myself. So I'm just saying that because I think it's important for transparency. Although personally, I do not know where this screenshot comes from. Um, this screenshot basically states that single thread um, performance for Cinebench R23 is roughly 2800 points. Now, this seems to be inclusive of IPC and maybe clock frequency gain. And because we don't know the part, so for example, it could be a Turing processor, which could maybe boost a little bit higher than its predecessor, um, not least of which because it's got extra wattage, um, then you do need to take that into consideration. So it probably doesn't mean that we're looking at a 40-ish percent IPC bump. However, again, if you look at the numbers that uh, are being reported here, who honestly knows? Um, now, I personally am still a little cautious of 30 or 35 percent because honestly, it is really high. And I'm referring here to the IPC numbers that I've personally heard um, because honestly, it's really high. However, it's not one of those numbers in terms of like a performance increase or you know an architectural improvement which is so out there it has never been done there are a lot of different architectures that you can point to that have achieved similar so for example conroe for intel or even sandy bridge was pretty performant although i suppose conroe um hang on, oh, crap what was the architecture was it I can't remember what the CPU was, um, the CPU architecture between Sandy and Conroe. It had uh, the i7-920s and stuff. The, the name eludes me. It, I'm sure someone will tell you in the comments because I, I, my brain is just completely drawn blank. So that's actually a good point. But there are other architectures that have been significantly perf 
more performant than their predecessors. I mean, hell, even if you look at AMD with the first generation of Zen versus, again, what they were putting out before, it was just ridiculous. Like, it's not even a ground-up design. It's like everything is different. The only thing that you could say it's the same in is it's an x86-based processor. But pretty much everything else, it's just like, whoop, out the window. Now, of course, going from, let's say, Bulldozer or Piledriver or whatever to Zen 1 versus, let's say, Zen 4 to Zen 5 is a little different. But it, again, is not out of the realms of possibility that this information is true. I will be ultra, ultra ultra excited when the actual benchmarks leak because if these numbers are true it would be i wouldn't say impossible for intel to compete because ultimately you know there are a lot of factors of course in play um we know that the next generation of intel processors yes they will do away with um uh hyper threading however the um you know, it's not like they're terrible. They do have a decent IPC gain themselves, and I'm hearing that the clock frequency is actually better than predicted as well. Um, one of the one of the major concerns with Arrow Lake for the P cores was that the clock frequency in early reports, anyway, was basically crappy. I don't remember the exact speed, but it's like somewhere in the low four gigahertz, like 4.2, 4.3, something like that, which obviously is not particularly good. Um, we should know more about that with the new engineering sample processes, where there's probably going to be some details about that that are leaking in the next, I don't know, two or three months or so. I think it's ES2. Um, so we should be hearing much more about those pretty soon. So I think we'll know, um, I think we'll have a much better understanding as to the ability for Intel to compete in the desktop. Obviously, servers and other um, other form factors like, for example, notebooks and laptops, that's a slightly different um, slightly different story. But what I will say to you guys is it will also be a, perhaps a tool of order because AM5 is pretty well established. So if you have, let's say, you know, a 7600X or something like that, why in goodness name would you jump to a new platform. Now, obviously, if there are some really major big performance issues or maybe Intel is somehow significantly better, then that would be a different story. Or maybe if the new generation of motherboards is really good on both sides and you're like, well, I kind of like the idea of this next generation board, especially if your current one sucks, like sometimes you can just be unlucky and you know, maybe have a bit of a faulty board. It's not so faulty that you need an RMA, but as a general topic. So I'm going to be very interested to see what happens with this. I will be extremely excited to see what this is actually capable of in terms of gaming, what the uh, scalability is in terms of memory. Um, I would also be curious how many people will sit on the sidelines and just not upgrade and just either wait for the X3D chimps or wait for Zen 6. I still feel that Zen 6 is probably going to be on AM5. Um, again, there's some mixed information about that, but I think it's very likely it's going to stick on AM5 um, for backwards and forwards compatibility. As far as I understand, uh, Zen 6 is still going to retain um, uh, the I.O. right now. By I.O., I should probably clarify, I mean the PCIe Gen 5 as well as... Um, DDR5 support, so we're not going to be moving to like DDR6 anytime soon. On the other hand as well, if you have, let's say, even a 12900K, it's probably going to be okay for gaming for a while, so I am very excited to see what Zen 5 brings to the table. I guess we could just wait for this space. I think there will be some really big leaks soon. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.